So when I was starting out recording my screencasts, I didn't find much helpful information out there about what software to use or how to best go about it. So I want to address some of these today. The first thing that I want to talk about is the prep that you should do before you start recording. So there's a few things that you want to do. Um, the first really is have a drink on hand because uh, you're, you're talking quite a lot, especially if you're like me and you do several takes. Um, you want something to stop your mouth from drying up. <laughs> Other than that, then the next most important thing is to put do not disturb on. So if you're on a Mac, um, you can hold the option key and click on the date time in the top right corner. That will put do not disturb on um, and stop notifications and things like that from creeping their way into your screencasts. The next thing that you want to do is tidy up your desktop, um, get rid of all icons on it if you can, and then also do the same with your browser. Um, what's great is in Safari, there's tab groups. So I've created a tab group for screencasts and that was solely used for those screencasts. There won't be any of my other um, tabs in there. So um, that's a good one for the browser. The next thing that you want to do is set your screen resolution. So I have a 4K monitor and when I'm recording the screencast, I'll set the resolution or scaling of that to basically be 1080p. Um, that means I can record in 4K and I can upload to YouTube in 4K, but everything's just that little bit bigger and easier to read. The next thing in line with that is your code editor so i use vs code what you'll want to do is bump up the font size a little bit and also maybe hide the sidebar um, and hide the terminal bar at the bottom if you can um, just to minimize the distractions you want people looking at your code not looking around the edges of the screen so the next thing is audio so get a microphone um, Anything is going to be better than your built-in MacBook microphone. Um, even though they're getting better these days, like you, you want something decent. So the microphone I was previously using was a Blue Yeti Nano, and they go for about 50 or 60 pounds and will give you good audio. I just upgraded to this Deity VO7U and it is just minimizes the echo a bit more in the room and hopefully it's slightly better quality. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description as well, but yeah, get a mic. So you need to decide, do you want to have your face in your screencasts or content? Um, you don't have to, but I think it can be a little more personal and just a little more interesting. Although that being said, my favorite screencasts of all time destroy all software. Um, I'll put a link to those in the description as well, as I believe Gary never showed his face in any of those videos and um, I really enjoyed those. So maybe I'm wrong about that. Now for software. So um, you can use QuickTime Player on Mac to record either your webcam and mic or uh, your screen and mic. This can be done by just opening QuickTime going to the file menu and hitting new screen recording. So you can do this all for free. However, it's going to be difficult to record your screen and your face at the same time and have those merged in. So if that's not something that you're interested in, then QuickTime is probably all you need. However, if you want to take things to the next level, I recommend ScreenFlow. So I saw a couple of people using ScreenFlow their website looks a bit janky, but the software is really good. Um, it allows you to capture multiple video sources, multiple audio sources, and it'll split those all up into individual clips that you can edit and do whatever you want with. So ScreenFlow is really good. It's easy to get started with, and I'll put a link to it in the description below. Now, once you've got your screencast recorded and you're ready to edit it, there are several choices. So on mac you can get imovie for free um, imovie is great to get started um, you can also get it on ipad for free as well um, and it'll let you do everything you need to do in the early stages if you 
by ScreenFlow, which I recommend. ScreenFlow has a built-in editor, so you can do everything you need in that. However, I have chosen the difficult route. I don't know why. Um, I am editing everything in Final Cut Pro. So I've just seen a lot of YouTubers and content creators talk about Final Cut and the plugins available for it and all of that stuff. So I've chosen to go the more complex route and um, hoping that someday it will pay off and um, I'll be good at Final Cut. So you are going to make mistakes. Um, we're all human, we all make mistakes. Uh, what's important is just keep going. Um, if you make a mistake in the middle of a sentence, uh, just take a pause and start that sentence over again. You can always edit. Um, you can remove things you've done wrong in your edits. Just cut out the bad bits. Doesn't need to be perfect. Um, just keep going. You can learn about the jump cut, which is basically an editing technique where you jump straight from one sentence to another. It can eliminate gaps, but it can also be used in my case to eliminate mistakes. And lastly, have fun. Enjoy the process. Enjoy learning about editing and uploading your videos and all that sort of stuff. I would encourage you to put your knowledge out there for the community to find. I've got great encouragement so far from people about my videos, even though I've uh, not very many subscribers. So if you like this content um, and want to see more, particularly Reels and JavaScript coding tutorials, uh, please subscribe. And if you have any tips on screencasts or any questions, please put them in the comments below.